Okay, so what's up? My name is Jefferson Lewis and this video is going to really, by the time you finish watching it, you're gonna have, uh, have a jump start on what you need to start researching. That's really what this video is about. It's, it's the starting point of figuring out how to create videos on your own uh, through the post-production stage, okay? So um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Jefferson. I've been an editor for many years. I've edited thousands of videos. Um, definitely a content creator myself. And this channel right now is new. So if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos. I post things like tutorials, unboxings. I give advice on what to purchase, what to buy. Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you know, um, you can always comment or message me uh, about what you're trying to do with your setup and I can help you out with that. Um, but anyway, right now, uh, and, and that's something that's great because I can do that while this community is small, right? While it's smaller, I can have more of an intimate, like one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. I will respond if you comment and message me. Um, uh, especially if you hit me up on Instagram, I respond to my Instagram real quick. But back to the point of what this video is for, um, editing, video editing, and software. What do you use? All that kind of stuff. Well, personally, I feel like software doesn't really matter too much. You wanna use what you're comfortable with. I personally like Final Cut X, um, but if you wanna use Premiere Pro or something on your phone like LumaFusion, all different editing softwares have kind of their own, um, the same kind of layout, so to speak. They all kind of do the same thing. They just kind of have different names for where things go. Um, so what I kind of want to do for you is, is give you kind of an um, a overview of uh, what you should study first, okay? So first of all, the, first, the biggest frustration I feel like uh, when it comes to editing, right, is knowing where things are. Like, like how do I do X, Y, Z, right, you know? Um, so really getting in tune with where things are on your interface is always number one. Um, I made a video uh, that I probably should, by, by the time this video is posted, will already be posted about a little bit about interfacing, but I can kind of just overview so you don't have to rewatch that video. Um, there's a couple main windows that you have on pretty much every editing software or platform. You have uh, your viewer, you know, where you see your footage. You have your library where you search your footage or... Um, or music or any other types of media that you'll be bringing into a project. You have your timeline, which is where your project is created, right? Um, where you do all your cuts and all your, everything that goes to the finished product. Like you have your project, your, your project timeline. Um, you have generally what's known as kind of like an inspector window or info tab, where you get all the info about the piece of media that you're selecting. So like, for example, if you are selected on a video clip, the inspector may show you the information of how, like the size information, rotation, or if you want to add effects, if you put effects on it, they end up there. Or if you want to know the frames per second that it was shot in, it all ends up in kind of the info tab, okay? And every editing software has these things, okay? So uh, there are a lot of videos on that, on interfacing um, that exist already that you can search, but the number one thing to do before you do anything else is learning just where things are on your particular interface. So um, look up generally a good way, to, a good thing to look up is like essentials for your, inter your training for your in interface. And that's generally the first thing you'll see like essentials for Premiere Pro. That's kind of the terminology I would use or essentials for Final Cut. I'll be making some Final Cut uh, X tutorials in the future um, that will, I'll go over some of those things specifically like where they are on the screen. Um, but for now, this is just something just to kind of wrap your mind around what to search and, and to get you started, you know? So uh, once you kind of know the interface, um, the second thing I believe you should focus on is knowing the tools, okay? So knowing the difference between uh, a blade tool and a pointer tool or a roll tool, ripple delete tool, there, there are these tools that basically when you're um, using the mouse can kind of change that will help you make editing go faster. Okay, so understanding the tools is the second thing you need to do. All right, so number first, understand the interface, you know, where all the, the things I first described are, and second is your tools, okay? Knowing uh, what each tool does, just kind of having a, a keen understanding of each, okay? Um, after understanding each tool, um, I think the next thing is what do you do with footage when you bring it in? Of course, there's 
navigating the software. Every software imports footage a different way, right? But um, what do you do with the footage initially? There's a step that almost everyone misses. And this is the first thing I feel like everybody should learn how to do when you're first starting out with editing is how to log. Logging is, uh, you know what, what's the definition of logging? Let me see if I can like look it up. Siri, what's logging mean? Let's see if Siri will tell me. A regular or systematic record of incidents or observations. Um, it's, it's close. Either way, logging is organizing the footage, okay? So, so basically, uh, if you want to work fast, you got to learn how to organize your footage first. That's, even if someone understands software already, sometimes people skip the step of learning how to organize their footage because uh, that is going to add so much time to your edit or when you're editing is, you know, comes from you searching for the clips you need, right? Um, like when you're a carpenter, you have the tools in front of you that you need. You bring the tools with you for the project you're doing. You don't need to see every single tool in front of you, you know? So, um, for example, when it comes to your media, you would organize your media by, let's say, you say so you record an event, right? You could organize it by, uh, beginning of the day, middle of the day, end of the day, you could organize your, um, uh, your speakers, so your the interviews from your B-roll to from different types of footage that you're looking at. Basically, the idea is to log your footage down to the point where you're only looking at, let's say, six to seven clips at a time, okay? You want, you want to make folders of your footage so that you're only looking at essential information that you're actually gonna put into your timeline. And as you start to study logging, again, that's the terminology to go search and, and look up, um, you'll notice there are also ways where you can do things like either sub clips or favorites in Final Cut, where you can even, let's say if you did an interview um, or a blog, like where, you're, or, or like where I'm kind of talking like this, um, where there are different points, you could block out a section of someone's interview and just look at that section of the interview when you're editing to bring into your timeline. So you don't see times when there are mistakes or pauses or somebody just kind of not saying anything. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's a really big important thing to do is you never want to be looking at more than six to 10 clips at one time in your media library. So you want to organize it as such. The more you organize, the faster your edit's going to come out. Because if, yeah, like I said, if you're looking for clips, you know, all the time, it just, becomes a nightmare, right? Especially if you have 200 some clips to work with. Um, after you get to learn uh, and get a good understanding of um, uh, how to organize your footage, uh, rough cutting is the next stage generally. And I had the opportunity a few years ago uh, to be on a, at, at a panel where um, Alan Bell, uh, who edited Catching Fire, uh, the Hunger Games, you know, um, we were, we were asking him questions about like, what's his process and workflow. And one of the things, you know, he said is the first thing he does is he creates a really bad movie first, and then he goes back and he refines it. And that's something that you'll find will make you a lot faster in the editing process as well. Instead of trying to edit the way the uh, video is going to look at the end from the beginning, you want to just edit a bad video first and then go back and tailor and, and, and correct and make changes and all that kind of stuff. So you, you make what's called a rough cut. So you take all the interviews you're gonna use, you take all the, um, B, maybe not necessarily B-roll, but like just, you kind of condense everything where you want it to be. Sometimes I'll put music in a rough cut, it doesn't really matter, it's, it's up to you how deep your rough cut you want it to be, but you make just a rough outline of where you want everything to go in your video, okay? So learning how to rough cut first, and that'll do a lot of, that has a lot of benefits for you psychologically as well because um, it can be overwhelming trying to do all these little fine-tuned edits like from the beginning, you know? Uh, so yeah, so you make your rough cut. Um, after that, uh, the next thing I would study is probably the art of when to transition, okay? I think that's the next thing you need to do. Now, now we're getting a little deeper. Honestly, by this point, you could probably go off and learn some of the other things I told you first and then maybe come back, but I'm gonna keep going just for the sake of letting you know what the next things to do are. Um, so learning about, I think, transitioning is maybe the next thing you wanna go into um, because when to cut and how to cut uh, is pretty dang important. And, and there are videos also that you can search like just 
you know, the psychology of cutting or like, um, uh, like what to, what types of cuts exist, you know, because there's a lot of different types of cuts, a cut being again, a transition. So from something that goes from one clip to the next clip, um, the most common cut, I will say this is just to just hard cut. Okay. There are other kind of cuts, jump cuts, dissolves, crossfades, all this kind of stuff. And in a lot of cases, people in the beginning, they always get really fancy with their, their transitions. And you don't really need to do that. Most uh, movies or most shows that you'll see just have standard cuts throughout the entire picture sometimes um, versus things that are like a little more fancy. So learning how to kind of sit back and not get too hype about using all these fancy stuff because you want to have a reason for every cut that you make. And I'll probably get deeper into that into later videos, but just understand that for now, transitions are important as a next step. Uh, once you learn a lot about transitioning, you've done organization, you've done, you've done these other things. Um, I think the next thing to, to kind of go on or, or start to, to really study would be um, storytelling. Then, then you start getting into the art of what you're doing. You know, that's when I think it's okay for you to start. Um, you, you, you should know enough by that point to where you can start studying and researching uh, what just makes a good story through editing. What about certain cuts or certain um, um, camera motions or post zooms or things like invoke the emotional feeling that you want. Also, by the way, uh, side note, check out uh, Walter Murch, uh, Rule of Six. I just made it, uh, it's funny, on a different channel that I own, I, I made um, a video where I talked about that a little bit, but check out Walter Murch, Rule of Six, famous editor. Um, that's something that can also let you know the hierarchy of importance of what you should be focusing on on an edit when it comes to things like story, emotion, eyeline, all those different things. Um, and then once you kind of have uh, and, and, and that's a forever learning process, by the way. So don't think you're just going to continue to learn that and then, you know, not be able to continue. Like, like do these steps, but don't let yourself get so focused into learning that you don't create because you got to create to then understand these, these things better. And, and it's, it's a forever learning process. I'm still learning about what makes a story work or what makes a cut or what makes a feeling um, from an edit work. So don't get too caught up in uh, not creating because you're studying that. Okay. But this is just something that to kind of start studying there. Um, going into more of the technicals, of course, um, the basics of learning how to export. Uh, I think it's good to learn export settings, but it's also good uh, to just experiment with export settings, like create a clip and then just try exporting it different ways and then just see the difference, it's good to just see the difference. I've done that before with every export setting in Final Cut, just to see how things would look, you know? Cause I'm just curious, you know, I'm just curious. Do, do like a little 10 second clip and just see the differences in export settings, you know? And um, also look, you can look up uh, export settings and codex, keyword there, codex, video codex. Um, it's another thing to search to, to kind of learn about that I would, uh, because when you're exporting for let's say YouTube, a popular codec to use would be H.264. So that's something that you would want to know um, is with export settings, you know, like what your codec is going to be. And depending on where your video is going will then depend on what codec you use. Okay. Um, but in most cases, most of us are doing things on YouTube. So H.264 is good for most social platforms, especially like on your phone, like for Instagram or like I said, YouTube, Vimeo, whatever, whatever you want to use. Um, I think that personally to me is enough to get you started. Okay. This is a good starting point for you. That's what you gotta learn. The things that I just went over, okay? Learn the interface, okay? Learn the tools, learn the organization, learn your rough cutting, you know, how to rough cut, learn your, um, uh, after rough cutting, what was the next one? I'm already forgetting. <laughs> but after rough cutting, you know, you get into like storytelling. So like fine cutting, like actually being an editor and actually doing the art of it. Um, and then of course, you know, how to export for different mediums. Okay. So that should get you started on what to search, the terminology to search, and hopefully save you some time so that when you edit, you'll be super fast. Um, again, my name is Je Jefferson Lewis III um, here at JL Post Pro. This is a new channel. I am going to be posting a lot of videos more on editing tips, but also shooting tips, shooting with your phone, shooting with your camera, 
things for bloggers and all kinds of tips. So make sure you subscribe. And if you have any questions or if there's a topic you want me to go over um, or kind of dive into a little deeper, be sure to leave that below. All right, thank you very much guys. And keep making the cut. Mm -hmm.